Now, to the uh, phones, and we'll go to uh, Los Angeles next, and Biff. Biff, welcome to the program. Hi. Hi. What's up? Yeah, um, Herman Cain. I know him well. I know him personally. I was treasurer when he was the uh, elected chairman of the board. You go through the chairs there. Two years later, when I was chairman of the board, our exec quit, and we hired Herman to run the association at that time. Uh, couldn't be a finer man. Couldn't have a lovelier wife. Three of the women, the first three that came out, I know personally from uh, being a director and a chairman of the association. Uh, the first two worked in the Washington offices and were pretty straight-up gals. Uh, they took exception, I guess, to... Uh, Whatever it was, it was so minor, it was never brought to the attention of even the officers, let alone the uh, executive committee or the board. The third one was in the Chicago office of the Educational Foundation. And by the way, the association, only about 20% of its activity is lobbying. We do so many other things uh, for the 14 million people that work in our industry. Um, but the Washington, the Chicago office uh, gal... Um, I met her when I was taking a tour of all of the, uh, uh, meeting all of the staff there and taking a tour. I was in her cubicle talking with her. She seemed very nice. Um, and then she said to me, you're handsome. We ought to go out to dinner. And she I did. Said, you're wrong on both. Yep. I said, you're wrong on both counts. We're not going to dinner. And I'm not handsome. <laughs> I re- I no, you're her. being, you're, you're We're being both. You're being both modest and uh, and uh, brushing her off here. Now, then what happened? Well, then I reported the exec of the association who said he, they were having a lot of trouble with her, and she was terminated. I don't think she lasted more than a few months there. Her now, was th- not- there's this now, now, Biff. Let me let me let me stop you right there. First of all, where were you three weeks ago when this bimbo eruption was happening? Well, I was right here in Los Angeles, fielding calls from the New York Times, uh, the Wall Street Journal. Uh, the Washington Post. And when Washington, you told them this story, what did they do? They uh, failed to respond to any of it, except the Wall Street Journal did uh, print something of a um, more uh, positive uh, yeah. part of, of, uh, of did the you know this? Did on. you know this gal, Sharon Bialik? Yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. So she's the one who she, hit on you and, and tried to get you to go to dinner because you were handsome? Yeah. <laughs> I was just stunned. I mean, I've been married for 30 years. I, you know, not as long as Herman, but our wives are friends. We travel together, uh, you know, to Japan for the Japan Food Service Association and everything else. And, I, you know, and she, anyway, she was terminated before Herman ever met her, before he came on as the exec. And so let me ask, you, let me ask you this, Biff. What, what, I, I, did Herman Cain have the reputation, and, and you're in a work situation, you know people have different reputations. Did he have the reputation as a womanizer or in any way a guy who would uh, flirt with or harass or in any way interact on any kind of a sexual level with the female employees? I have to tell you that it's totally, totally unnecessary to even go there. And i give you one example of why Herman didn't have that reputation, why he wasn't that kind of guy. We hired him because he was such a great speaker, and he, we needed him to go out and speak to restaurant tours all over the country. We also hired him because our AT stuff was in shambles, and that was his background. He was phenomenal at it. Right. And by the way, we paid him substantially less than what was paid to other execs and other associations at that time, uh, you know, a fraction of what they were paying Frank Valenti and some of the others back there. Um, and he was still quite comfortable with that. We granted him a few perks instead of the huge, the huge salaries that those guys were making. And he did go out and speak. And after every one of those engagements, engagements I mean, I can remember, I was down in Nebraska, I was speaking to a thousand people at a restaurant dinner. And afterwards, there were always people hanging around asking questions, which we encourage them to do. And there's always a couple of good-looking girls that'll say, gosh, I have this problem at a restaurant. Um, and I, I need to talk to you in private about it. Can we go up to my room? And uh, the answer is always, no, we can talk about it at the bar. And, you know, you don't have to. He never had to hassle anybody. He never had to harass anybody. If he was a womanizer, 
uh, you know, we have our own set of groupies. And Interesting. It just wasn't. Just wasn't. And Interesting. So the characterization is so unconscionably unfriendly and untrue. Uh, hey, uh, Biff, I appreciate your call. Wish I would have gotten it three weeks ago. Could have changed the course of history.